Hi there, my name is Macon Campbell and welcome to my workshop. So a couple of weeks ago I bought my first table saw. Um, here I am using it for the, for the first time, cutting some parts for a tool board that I made. Now I've never owned a table saw before and I've never used one before. So uh, I don't exactly know what a good table saw feels like, but uh, there were definitely some things uh, that I didn't like about this specific one. Uh, the fence was very loose, I couldn't get it lined up properly and uh, I struggled to get it uh, square with the blade and square with the table. So I decided to uh, build a new top as well as a new fence. Uh, I will be doing some further upgrades in the future, but uh, in this video it's going to be only those two. Now, I didn't draw up any plans for this uh, as I usually do. So uh, I just sort of made it up as I went along. I had a rough idea of what it is that I wanted, so uh, I just sort of tried to stick to that. The material that I'm using here is a 18 millimeter MDF. Uh, around here we call it uh, super wood. So here I am cutting a few uh, strips on the, the miter saw, the miter box, uh, which I'll be screwing to the bottom of my table, um, which will slot over the existing table. Here I'm trying to screw the uh, wooden strips to the bottom of my tabletop and I ran into a couple of problems here. Firstly my screws were too short so I had to countersink my holes almost halfway through the strips just to reach the, the, the tabletop. And uh, secondly, my countersink drill bit came apart, as you see. Uh, it took quite a bit getting that out because uh, that drill bit uh, seized up nicely inside that hole. And of course, it was very hot and uh, it's a very thin drill bit, so I struggled getting that out without bending it. As you see, none of these pieces had any specific measurements. You know, it was just scraps lying around the shop that I cut up. My son paying me a visit, keeping me some company. Clean up a bit. So yeah, I'm drilling holes into the bottom of the uh, table saw's top. Um, it's a cast iron top, but very thin, so the holes went through pretty easily. Uh, I took a couple of screws and just uh, screwed it in from the bottom. Now this was by far the scariest part. I just kept on picturing that blade flying out there and uh, going straight to my face. But uh, luckily that didn't happen. It's a good thing I sped this part up because it took quite a while to get through that uh, aluminium channel. Afterwards I saw on the, the mitre source box that the blade that came with it was actually meant for wood. Go figure. I did eventually get through it. Uh, now this is what uh, passes for a T-track here. Yeah. Uh, I searched for almost a week to find a T-track in uh, my town but and nobody even knows what I'm talking about. So this is what I found. It's as close as I could get. Here's a picture of what it looks like. Yeah, I'm cutting what uh, I suppose you call the T part of the fence. And this too, obviously, as you can see, is just uh, scrap lying around my shop.
As you can see, I'm not using any glue throughout this project. I'm just uh, screwing everything together and uh, checking what works and what doesn't work. Uh, if it doesn't work, I can just take it apart and uh, you know, if I decide to make it permanent, I can just go back and glue it later. But I think the screws will be plenty strong enough to uh, keep this thing together. Checking for square here and uh, obviously it's not. Fortunately I did find one side that was a nice and square so I just made sure to use that side as the face of my face. Just driving in the last uh, couple of screws and then uh, the main part of my fence is done. Here I'm just dry fitting everything just to see if uh, the parts fit together as I envisioned it. Uh, checking for square with the blade and square to the table. Once I got everything lined up I drive some screws in through the T into the fence to fix those two together. Uh, now I'll install the hardware uh, just to see if everything works mechanically um, as planned. And now you'll see that I um, have the wing nuts riding inside the track. Because initially I had it the other way around, but for some reason uh, having the, the head of the bolt running in the track, uh, if it was just one it was fine, but having two of them, um, they sort of jammed up. So turning them around and having the, the wing nut inside the track worked out a lot better for me. So right here I had a bit of an idiot moment. I was itching to do a test cut and see if everything worked fine and uh, I decided to do a, a cut on this little piece of scrap and I got me a bit of a kickback. So on to making the knobs. Um, for the knobs I also just used a couple of scraps of uh, MDF. I uh, just drilled a couple of holes uh, a quarter of the way through uh, because I was planning to epoxy the bolts into the knobs. Now I'll just trace the head of the bolt over the hole I just drilled so that I can uh, clear that out with a chisel and get the bolt to fit in there nicely. Once I've got that done and everything's fitting nicely, um, I can go ahead and draw out the knobs and cut them out. Next I'll pull out my scroll saw, because I don't have a band saw, and uh, cut out my knob shapes. Now, I'm not exactly a ninja on the scroll saw, and this is probably like the third time that I've used it. Probably by no means the best scroll saw out there, so uh, perhaps there's some upgrades uh, for this one in the future as well. But uh, I got through it and uh, the parts came out okay. On to some sanding here between the belt sander and disc sander.
Now I'm mixing up some two part epoxy that I'm going to use to glue the bolts into the knobs. I don't know if all epoxy is the same, but this one definitely smells like if you know what I mean. Now it's time to start finishing everything. Um, yeah, I'm sanding the top down with uh, my random orbital sander. I suppose I could have skipped this step as the MDF was fairly smooth already, but uh, this helped in cleaning it up a bit. Once I was done with this, I wiped everything down with a wet cloth just to remove all the dust and prepared for finishing. What I'm using here is a boiled linseed oil. I don't know if it's the best thing for the job, but uh, I simply use it because that's what I had. So now that everything is finished and dried, I can move on to final assembly and uh, boy, it's, uh, it was quite exciting. Uh, but as you can tell, uh, I haven't been doing this for a long time and it's always nice to see a project come together. So finally I get to do a proper test cut. A rip cut this time, obviously, seeing as I'm using a rip fence. The only problem I had here was uh, that my knobs were a little bit too big. In other words, the knob on the blade side was sticking out uh, above the height of the table, which meant I couldn't get the piece perfectly flush with the table at the back at least. But I can easily go back later and just uh, sand that down. So looking back on my project, uh, I'm fairly pleased. Obviously if I um, had to go back and do it again, there would be some things I would change. But for the time being at least, I think I can make cleaner, more accurate cuts more easily than I could have done had I not made the changes. So if you made it this far, I thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please show me some love. If you'd like to see what I'm going to do next, Please subscribe and if you have any comments just leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much.